Many people learn how to use applications like Photoshop through online tutorials. Websites like Good Tutorials contain tens of thousands of these tutorials. Each tutorial describes a sequence of commands. This tutorial shows how to recolor eyes. It first uses the lasso tool to select the eyes and the hue saturation command to adjust the color. Because tutorials are designed for people and explain steps in natural language, it is difficult to compare tutorials. Users are limited to browsing lists of tutorials or performing keyword searches. Sifter enables users to browse and analyze large tutorial collections based on their command level structure. Sifter's interface has three main views. A faceted browser view to organize, sort, and filter tutorials. A tutorial view with a table of commands that summarizes and indexes the tutorial. And an alignment view to compare command sequences across multiple tutorials. Let's walk through the Sifter interface. I'm interested in using Photoshop to create a web layout. Initially, I see all tutorials in Sifter's collection. Like other websites, Sifter organizes tutorials by high-level categories. When I select Web Layouts in a Category facet, Sifter shows the tutorials in that category. Clicking on a tutorial brings me to the Tutorial view. The Table of Commands summarizes the sequence of commands and serves as an index into the tutorial. I can see that the Pen tool is used to draw a path for selection. To find frequently used commands within web layouts, I select the n-grams of length 1. Here we see the most common command is new layer, and it occurs 394 times. I can also change sort options to find the most unique commands in web layouts. They are common in the category, but uncommon in other categories. Paragraph appears at the top of this list. Many web layouts involve formatting of text paragraphs. I can also find common multi-command strategies, for example by selecting 3 grams. The results show that there are many 3 command sequences that involve a marquee tool. I can look through the results to see how they are used. Here marquee is used to create a square button. Of course I can also browse common commands without restricting my view to a single category. Here we see that the most common commands for the entire tutorial collection are new layer, opacity, and duplicate. Another feature is selection search. This tutorial uses the rounded rectangle tool, fill, and color to create a content box. I can find other tutorials that use this three command sequence. The resulting set of tutorials all contain this command sequence. Browsing through them, I find a nicer style for a content box. If I select a subset of tutorials and switch to the alignment view, I can visually compare their command structures. The one to all layout shows me how multiple tutorials compare to the first one. Or I can pick the pairwise option to place similar tutorials next to each other. In these hair coloring tutorials, the first two primarily use the brush tool to recolor hair. These three are very similar and use the fill command to change the color, while the last tutorial takes a very different approach. To evaluate Sifter, we conducted a user study with nine participants. We found that Sifter is easy to understand and to use. Our results also show that the browsing tasks enabled by Sifter are difficult to accomplish with regular keyword search. As more instructional material appears online, we believe that leveraging the command level structure of tutorials will be essential for helping people learn software tools.